Welcome to the Voc Talk Cafe by Après Cours, and this is a place where we chat live about teaching a trade in today's world. So my name is Robin, and I am with Mark, my co-partner over there, your two hosts for the Voc Talk Cafe, and today's exciting. We have a guest, but before we start, um, just, just a reminder, They're on all... the website, you have access to all the collaborative documents and resources. So when you go inside the actual group, you can see that you have access to the recordings and the summaries and the archives. You have access to the uh, shared uh, agenda and everybody's welcome to add to the agenda. You have access to the um, library uh, with uh, all the resources that we have are shared in there. And then of course the calendar and I strongly suggest you sign up uh, to the calendar because it'll add it straight into your professional calendar and every week you can see what the themes are. And then there's also the document to record the attendance. So that's all on the website. Everything that you'll see here will be available on the website. So a small word, this is a pilot project. So anything you have to say about this, any ideas you have, any suggestions, any implication, it's definitely worth hearing. So definitely speak up and, and reach out to us and bring it up in, the, in this forum because we want to make this a space for, that everybody feels uh, comfortable in. Today, Monday, November 6th, we are talking with the food sector uh, and we are talking about digital libraries as the future of education. And we have our guest today. So our guest is Ollie Harding, who's a teacher, uh, a cooking teacher at PAC at Lester B. Pearson. Um, and today's goals. So today we want to discuss sort of the difference between using hard copies and digital, digital reference manuals for students we want to look at the benefits of an e-library, not just for students, but also for instructors. And we want to talk about using it outside of the professional cooking program, how this can carry over into everyday life and professional life. So the session breakdown. So the first 15 minutes are going to be the presentation, and Ollie's going to talk to us about the e-learning library. This is recorded. Then we stop the recording, and we have 45 minutes to discuss some of the things that were brought up. After that, we go, this is not recorded and this is to keep a safe space for everybody to, to discuss and to feel free to, to bring up some ideas. Then we go back to the recording and the last five minutes are recorded where we have our technology and teaching inspiration. All right, Ollie. So good afternoon, everybody. As Robin said, my name is Ollie Harding and I am a professional cooking instructor in Market Fresh Cuisine also at PAC. Um, so thanks for having me, Robin and Mark. We're going to discuss um, digital libraries, um, specifically a platform that we're using at PAC in the professional cooking department. So firstly, I'd like to talk about some AKAs or some other words. You may not have heard the term digital library, but um, it goes under a plethora of other names like an online library, a digital repository, a library without walls, internet library, digital collection, or as I know it best, an e-library. Um, so a variety of different names um, this comes under. So as I am in the professional cooking program, I'm gonna be using um, what we, I'm gonna be talking about what we use in professional cooking. So we have a hard copy, uh, professional cooking um, by an author, Wayne Gislin. And this um, is like a culinary Bible for our students. A lot of our recipes come out from this booklet, techniques. Um, at the end of all the chapters, there's, there's quiz questions um, for our students. So this is what we, we use. And um, I think it's been, this booklet's been in use for, maybe Robin can help me out, uh, 20, since the program kind of started, I would say, this has been the, oh. the culinary Bible. Even I was going to say, when I went to culinary school, okay, we so, had that textbook, but I had the second edition. <laughs> okay. That was back we're on, in we're, we're on 97. Edition nine. <laughs> yeah. So we're on edition nine now. And then um, we, we're working with a company. Uh, the platform is called CKBK, uh, which is our e-library. Um, so throughout this presentation, quite a short presentation, I'm going to be comparing this hard copy with the e-library platform that we're using at the center. Um, we just started using it a year ago, um, so still quite new in, it, in its infancy. So this is the points that I'm going to be discussing today. Uh, cost, always a great concern of students. Um, language, we have a lot of an influx of international students. 
Um, I've only been at the center for a few years and I've seen the growth in international students coming into our programs. So we'll discuss that. We'll discuss portability, uh, how easy it is to lug these books around. Uh, the index will talk about how our students can find recipes or techniques within that the hard book and on the e-library. We'll talk about media, how it's presented uh, in the book and on the e-library. And then we'll just, we're going to touch on um, some benefits, possible benefits for instructors in our program, but um, possibly in your programs, you'll see uh, that they can, it can be mirrored and used. So first we will talk about the cost. Uh, the hard copy at the moment is $130. Uh, that is climbing. It, it's not going to go down um, that I can see. Um, the digital library for, we, 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 we got um, a code for our students. So for the year that they're enrolled in professional cooking, uh, they'll pay $20 um, for unlimited uh, use of the platform. And at the moment, there's over 600 reference books and cookbooks, each one with the newest version being updated live, uh, which is another benefit of a e-library. I mentioned the that we have a lot more international students now in our programs. Um, so the hard copy, it's English. Uh, it's an English program, an English school board. So that's the language it's available in. And then with the digital library, um, you can use the library from the an application. So if you're Apple, you go into the i, I store or Apple store, App Store. And then if you're using uh, Samsung or Android, it's in the Play Store. Um, but you can also use it by just going to your URL uh, search bar, Chrome, Safari, uh, any web browser. And if you downloaded the language um, into that browser, so we, we use Chrome, so you can add dictionaries uh, into Chrome. You can, then down, you can then translate all of the pages into the language of your choice. Um, once you've, once you've um, changed those, the page into a different language, you can then print that page. Uh, so you can you can turn it into a hard copy, which is very handy for our, our, uh, our international students. We're going to talk about the weight and portability, a uh, little bit of an exaggeration, but there's a fun little cartoon of someone being squashed by their 3.5 kilo cookbook <laughs> that they're trying to lug around the center from kitchen to kitchen, class to class in the summer, trying to put that on the back of their little bicycle. Um, so over a thousand pages and 3.3 kilo. So it's, it's a book. It's, it's, you can't put it in your pocket. It's, you got to carry it with two hands. Um, and then we have the digital library, which is the weight of your smartphone or your tablet. Um, and then again, students can use it just on their computers at home. Um, or here, we're, we're lucky enough to have iPad trolleys. Uh, thank you, Robin. And we also have Chromebook <laughs> trolleys. So we do have, um, we have some different uh, hardware that students can use um, just by logging into their account from the URL or from the app store uh, within the iPads. So no worries about them. If they leave it at home, the hard copy with the digital, it, it, it's everywhere. It's, it's always there. And it doesn't get heavier the more books you download. 600 books weighs the same as one book. It's the same weight as a smartphone. So this is another math bonus. So the weight stays the same, easy to put in your pocket, a smartphone. So now with the index, so at the back of our hard copy, Wayne Gislin, there's over 40 pages of appendices or index. Um, and then for international students and the most French speakers, English speakers, verb before noun, backwards and forwards, it's kind of hard for them to know which word they're searching for. If they want carrot soup, are they searching carrot? Are they searching soup? Um, but with the digital library, you would just type in, you could just type in uh, carrot soup and all the books, 600 plus books that contain a carrot soup, it would then give you, it would then list all of those recipes. Um, to then be easily searched for. Um, but within that, you can search for keywords, uh, different diets, different spice levels. If you have allergies, you could type in the search bar gluten-free and the only recipes that would show would be gluten-free. Um, 
we have menu planning where we might want to design menus for certain nationalities or ethnic ethnic dishes. You would just type in Arabic dishes and then all the books containing that type of cuisine would come up. So very, very handy. What could take a while of thumbing through 40 pages of index? It's really just type in exactly what you're looking for and it, it gives you uh, a lot of choices. And it's all very visually, visually appealing as well. So now moving on to media and the way that these, uh, for us, recipes and techniques are shared uh, within the professional cooking by Wayne Gislin. I've taken some screenshots. So still nice. I've gone quite English with fish and chips and well, dope and well, potatoes. We had to put potatoes in there. Um, they look very nice. The photos are very nice. It gives you a picture of a final product. Um, so nothing wrong with that. But within the digital library, um, some of the newer books that have been uploaded will have still images, but they'll also have spoken word um, and also videos of techniques, which I've just uploaded one here. Um, so again, a lot of our, our learners in professional cooking, myself included, are very visual uh, and lines and lines of words don't always stay in. Um, our minds. Um, so yeah, so very visual. Um, and the techniques, some of the techniques that are included in some of these books are very nicely filmed and um, they look very good. So now from the instructor's point of view, like I mentioned, we've been, it's been just over a year, I would say, all our groups now in the building, our seven groups, six groups, they all have access to this um, as they come in. Um, so we're still a little bit in the infancy. Um, there are some competencies that would lend very well to this. Um, we have one, like I mentioned, menu planning in the, the market fresh cuisine. We have recipe development and standardization. And I mean, throughout the pro throughout the, the, the professional cooking program, it's, it's still very, very useful to have all of this. Um, for an instructor, one of the things at the beginning, okay, everyone turn to page 23, carrot soup. <laughs> But then it depends which version you have. If you have version two, like Robin has, it may very well be page 16 at this point. And then as they add, more pages get added. And I think now Carrot Soup could be page 100. So if we have 26 students like we do right now, it could be different versions, different page numbers. I don't mind to embarrass myself at least once a day, but I like it when all the students have the same book and the same page and they know what their instructor's talking about. Um, so with the hard copy, it depends which one they have. Um, if, if the student didn't have their booklet with them, you would then run to the photocopier, make the copy, print it, only for the student to then leave it under the table anyway. Um, for quizzes, we would copy the quiz questions. As I mentioned, at the end of each chapter, it's really good. They, they have an amazing um, few pages of questions to do with the material that you've just gone through in that chapter. Um, that can lead us as instructors to answer some, to ask some good questions of our students to do with it. And they're already written out. With the hard copy, you would have to copy word for word, put it into your Kahoot or your quiz, um, which can take a little bit of time. Um, again, with the recipe page, taking the photo, you could then upload it into your slide, then share the slide. So a few steps to get to that point. And then if you're in the classroom, you've got 23, 26 students times 3.5 kilos. You have hundreds of kilos of books in the taking up space in the in the yeah. classroom. Um, so, yeah, a lot of a lot of these. And then we can just do a little comparison with. The digital library, I mean, as mentioned, every time a new version is available, uh, CKBK update it completely. So everyone now in our kitchens and classrooms they all have access to um, version nine um, so no problems with telling them which page to go to they're all going to have the same um, you can you can put the you can um, share straight to your smart screen the recipe of the days but the students can also look along at the same time on their cell phone or on their ipad they have at their desk so everything's very uh, uniform and in unison um, as far as those quiz questions on the e-library, it's very easy to copy or cut and then paste directly into your slide or into a quiz without so many movements. Um, having to copy the, you're already on the, the computer, it, it takes care of itself with two clicks. Um, 
And then another thing, instead of having all of those books on the desks, um, we just take our trolley of iPads or our trolley of Chromebooks. We have it at the front of the classroom. Each student knows their number for their Chromebook. So they're always using the same one when possible. Um, they're very easily accessible and e easily maneuvered from the theoretical classroom into the, the laboratory or into the kitchens. We can just wheel it from one class to the other. Um, very easy. And then another bonus, I believe, for instructors is that the, with the vast array of recipes, uh, you, we can really put some more modern recipes into our circulation of maybe some slightly older material and bring everything kind of up to date a little bit, you know? Um, I believe in it. I like it. Uh, I've had feedback from students, especially international students, with the click of their the right mouse button being able to translate all the pages into their language of choice. Um, it just means that they can then take some quick notes. And if even if their hard book in the lab is in English, they've taken some notes down and they can just summarize uh, to make it a little easier for themselves coming into the classroom to then get on with the, the practical side of things. Um, and that's my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Um, appreciate it. I think it's a great platform. I love it. Um, and then over to Robin for today's takeaways. Thanks for having okay. me. Okay. All right. Thank you, Wally. That was so awesome. That no, that's good. Because like, no, it's good. Because now we have lots of questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. So our key takeaways. So from what we saw, very beneficial for those students who, uh, who have whose first language is not English, because it's the from what we understand is it's pretty much everything is very easily translatable. It's extremely portable and cost efficient. There were a couple other things there that I heard that I'm like, oh, good. I want to talk about that because that sounds like a really big plus. And so with that. This is the end of the recording. So we're going to stop the recording now and we can go ahead and have our lovely discussion. So, all right, Tech Capsule. Tech Capsule. So this week, uh, I'm getting a bit, I'm straying away a bit from my uh, original ma main mandate because I'm, as a RISC consultant, I'm, uh, my mission is to uh, support the integration of technology and education. And I'm bringing you a tool that is not tech at all but we talked a lot about books about reading and it's about... important to talk about the students uh, supporting students effort into using that reading efficiently to uh, learn so i found well i found right uh, i'm sharing with you uh, two documents that were prepared by the Observatoire de la Formation Professionnelle du Québec, who does provide documentation and tools in English. Uh, many of their uh, research paper, uh, compte rendu and stuff is actually translated on their website. Uh, this, the, and these are guides that were, uh, that were designed, one for the students in vocational training, one for the instructors to support uh, reading strategies to learn better. Um, uh, five of those strategies, the, 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 you, they, they elaborate on five strategies, trying to make predictions, uh, designing questions to ask oneself with, to, to verify that they have acquired the knowledge, making connections with previous knowledge, uh, clarifying and researching things that were not specifically uh, well uh, understood at the first reading, and preparing summaries. So five, five things that uh, could uh, help a lot the students uh, in in actually using their reading to learn and not just to complete the assignment of having read that page. Uh, I think they are very interesting and going to be super useful. So the links are in the presentation. They're going to be in the library, the resource library as well. So check them out. Okay, thanks. Thanks, man. All right, with that, any open mic? Do we have any? Do we have any uh, questions? Any any things that people want to bring up? I have one. Go ahead. I have one. So uh, coming up this spring is the QACVE conference, which is the some crazy acronym. Uh, uh, I think I know it. With... There's a Quebec Advisory Council for Vocational Education in English, something like that. Okay. I'm not sure why it's vocational education and not vocational training, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> We're not the ones responsible for the acronym. <laughs> anyway, it's our big uh, VT conference. It's once every two years and it's coming up this spring. Um, and we're looking for people that would like to present. Um, there are two formats 
this this spring there's like the the regular 45 minute workshop or presentation type format where you're in a room and you know media and do whatever you want there but 45 minutes of that type of presentation but then we also have um a poster session and poster sessions are more like you know science fairs of your childhood you know where you have a table you have a stand you have some posters mm -hmm. some information written on the posters and you want to present something you want to present uh, an idea, uh, best practice, uh, something cool you're doing with your students, something of interest, it doesn't matter, anything that could be of interest to other VT teachers. Um, so there's two types of, 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 uh, of uh, pr presentation or, or learning situations. And so we're, we're looking for people that would like to present. And as a former VT teacher, I really like learning from my colleagues. And so my mission <laughs> this year is to try and get as many VT teachers presenting at QACV as possible. <laughs> so I'm just putting that out there. If people would like to think about uh, doing a session, that would be awesome. If a session seems like a little bit too much, if you want to do a poster, that would also be super awesome. Um, so the the information for that, uh, I, I'll put it in the document, but it's also on the vt.proceed.ca platform. And of course, you can always email me at robin at proceed.ca if you have any questions. The deadline for that is November 30th. All right, so to continue the discussion, let's go ahead and go to vt.proceed.ca. You can go to the group tile and continue the discussion thread. Uh, I always paste the summary of 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 every uh, of every session in the group tile, so you can continue the discussion there. Uh, if you need, we also have a chat button <laughs> that people can use. Uh, there is the exit ticket market. I, I realize you guys are getting bombarded by links in the in the chat, <laughs> but if you would take a few minutes to fill out the exit ticket, it's always very appreciated. If That's you have what an Robin idea. was talking about at the beginning. Like we're still uh, reflecting on our work and and building uh, building new episodes as we go. So all your feedback would be much appreciated. It was appreciated. And if you have an idea, go ahead and reach out to us. That would be great. Um, and if any questions on today's, we put Ollie's name there because anybody's any questions, we're sending them straight to Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, thanks for coming. We don't have any, the resources will be in the, um, in the documents. And next session is next Monday. Thanks for coming by everybody.